With last month's re-release of San Andreas and new players being able to experience the game, I thought now would be a good time to look at one of our favourite villains real life counterpart, the man who not only inspired Officer Tenpenny but also Denzel Washington's character Alonzo Harris from Training Day, today we're looking at former LAPD officer Rafael Perez. Rafael was born in Himacal, Puerto Rico on the 22nd of August 1967 before moving to America with his mother and two siblings at the young age of five. They originally landed in New York but after a few months moved to Patterson, New Jersey, where Raphael spent most of his youth. Whilst in Patterson, he attended Eastside High, run at the time by no-nonsense principal Joe Clark. Clark was a disciplinarian who would walk the corridors wielding a baseball bat in one hand and a megaphone in the other, and was the inspiration for the film Lean On Me, starring Morgan Freeman. But Raphael loved the strictness. He's recalled in interviews times he would catch his older brother and sister skipping class and how he would lecture them about the reasons why they needed to attend and he would also threaten them with telling their mother about it if they didn't go. As you can imagine, Raphael didn't have a lot of friends in school growing up. He described himself as shy and felt he was more mature than the other kids around him. Whilst other kids were playing, he would be thinking about what he wanted his future to be. Inspired by cop shows like Starsky and Hutch, he set his sights on one day becoming a police officer and didn't want to ever risk his future by hanging around with the wrong kids. In 1982, just before Raphael was about to enter high school, he and his family moved to North Philadelphia. They initially lived with his uncle who was a drug dealer at the time, and being around that environment only strengthened his desire to one day become a police officer. Knowing that the police force wouldn't hire an 18-year-old kid fresh out of school, he did what he considered the next best thing, and three days after graduation flew out for Marine Boot Camp. Now, fun little comparison time. Although it's never mentioned in game if Officer Tenpenny served in the Marine Corps, if we have a look at the artwork of him that's used for one of the PC loading screens, we can see that he has tattoos which aren't on his in game model. One of which on his upper arm appears to be the Marine Corps Eagle Globe and Anchor emblem. But anyway, back to Perez. He enjoyed his time in the Marines, finally finding other people who matched his determination, and for the first time in his life, finding that camaraderie that he'd never experienced. After boot camp, he was sent to the Marine Barracks at Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where he would meet Laurie Charles, a beautiful young woman from California who was stationed at the nearby Air Force Base. Despite her saying she wouldn't go out with Raphael, even if he was the last man on earth, six months after their first meeting, the couple were married. In 1988, after being together for three years, Laurie was told that the Air Force Base she worked at was being closed and the couple were given options about where they could go. But for her, there was only one, and that was going back home to California. So she took a discharge and Raphael was transferred to Tustin, Orange County. However, shortly after moving to California, Laurie discovered that Raphael had cheated on her with an Earl Marine and the couple had separated. After moving across the country and separating from his wife, Raphael decided his time in the military was up and now was his chance to chase his childhood dream of becoming a police officer. Despite being rejected by multiple other police departments in Southern California due to background investigators claiming he was acting and looking in a gang-like manner. He was eventually accepted by the LAPD Academy and in 1989 graduated at the age of 22. In his rookie year, being a cop was everything he had dreamed about. The adrenaline rush of chasing down suspects and the ever threat of people pulling guns on him was something that he thrived on. In his first year, he learned to develop a new personality. On the force, he went by Ray and was a complete contrast to the real Raphael. He talked about how, when he pulled on the uniform, he found himself acting. He'd be breaking up arguments and telling people how to resolve their disputes, counselling people on their relationships despite not having the experience, or talking to kids and explaining things to them despite not having kids of his own. But because of the badge and how he carried himself, people would listen. After his first year, he was considered a good aggressive cop by higher-ups, and due to his age and ability to speak Spanish, he was transferred to an undercover narcotics assignment. He joined the West Bureau by team which mostly consisted of other young cops who were tasked with buying drugs and then arresting their dealer. As you can imagine, this was a pretty dangerous gig, but was something he took to like a duck to water. Whilst on the by squad, he became good friends with a fellow young officer named David Mack, who had gone to receive the LAPD Medal of Heroism for supposedly saving Raphael's life, and I say supposedly because there's conflicting views on what happened that night. So the official story that Perez and Mac stand by is that whilst on a buy, the dealer came up to their car and was immediately suspicious of them. He pulled out a gun and then put it to Mac's head. With Raphael unable to reach his gun, Mac claims to have turned his head away from the dealer, pulled out a gun that was hidden under his belt and then killed the dealer. Whilst it sounds like a great story, witnesses claim that the dealer was actually unarmed when he approached the car and was shot once whilst at the window talking to them and then again whilst trying to run away. Considering what eventually gets revealed about both men, investigators now consider this a highly suspicious event. In 94, Perez was moved to Rampart, a police division that covered west of downtown Los Angeles, the most densely populated area in LA and home to over 30 different gangs. 
After impressing in his first year, he was invited to the Community Resources Against Street Hoodlums Unit, most commonly referred to as CRASH, a specialised undercover unit that was tasked with combating all gang-related crimes in the area. Officers in Rampart were frequently reminded that their careers were made by how many arrests they could make, and with the CRASH unit having such a long leash, they could spend their days doing as they saw fit as long as there was arrests being made. Perez has said that when he joined Crash he was an honest by the book cop but quickly learned that sometimes to make an arrest you've got to break the rules and nobody ever questioned the arrests. In his eyes, planting drugs or a weapon on a known gang member to get them off the streets was fair game. If criminals weren't following the rules then why should he? And according to Perez, this was the mindset of the majority of the officers in Crash. One of the young men Perez got falsely imprisoned was 19 year old Javier Ovando, a member of the 18th Street Gang. Whilst in an abandoned apartment building monitoring drug activity with his partner Nino Durden, Javier walked in on them, causing Perez and Durden to open fire, paralysing the young man from the waist down. Upon realising that Javier was unarmed, they planted a gun on him, claiming he opened fire first and that the officers acted in self-defence. Due to their testimony, Javier was sentenced to 23 years in prison for attempted murder and Perez has since stated that it's the most regrettable thing he ever did. At first, Perez saw himself as a cop breaking the law in pursuit of justice, but soon found himself as another criminal. He would steal money from drug busts, small amounts at first that nobody would notice going missing, hold on any weapons that he found so he could plant them on a suspect when the chance arose, and even started selling the drugs that he would take off dealers. He actually started stealing so much that despite being married to his second wife at the time, he had multiple girlfriends across the city that would sell his stolen drugs. Everything was going great for Perez, he was making money hand over fist and even took on a second job working security for Shug Knight and Death Row Records. That is, until in 1998 when after 9 years of service to the LAPD, SWAT teams raided his house and placed him under arrest for the theft of police evidence. More specifically, six pounds of cocaine which he checked out under a different name. See at the time, one of Perez's friends who was an undercover cop, also working with Death Row Records on the side, was shot and killed by another officer, Frank Liga. So in retaliation, Perez, who had stolen drugs from the evidence locker multiple times, unsuccessfully tried to frame Liga for the theft. Faced with potentially serving 12 years in prison, Perez struck a deal with the prosecutors. In exchange for immunity, he gave information on the widespread corruption within LAPD's Rampart Division. Over the course of 50 interviews, he told stories of other officers planting evidence to secure convictions, excessive force being used during arrests, how they would make up alibis to cover for each other and intimidate any locals who witnessed their crimes. From drinking on the job to the attempted murder of suspects, Perez told it all. He even spoke about the crash unit's unwritten motto, intimidate those who intimidate others, and going back to San Andreas for a second, Officer Tenpenny directly quotes this motto to Caro in the Green Sabre mission. You fucking sick motherfucker! Intimidate those who intimidate others, Carl. It's my job. By the time he was finished, his testimony transcript was over 4,000 pages long. Due to Perez's testimony, 70 Rampart officers were placed under investigation, and of those 70, only 9 were prosecuted and 24 fired. Over 100 cases were overturned and the wrongly imprisoned set free, including Javier Ovando, who filed a lawsuit against the LAPD and received the largest settlement in LAPD's history of $15 million. Over 140 lawsuits were filed against the LAPD in what locals called the Rampart Lottery, which cost the police department over $125 million. So what happened to Perez? Well, after his testimony against his fellow officers, he served three years of his five-year sentence for stealing from a police evidence locker and was released in 2001, before pleading guilty to the shooting of Javier Ovando and was sentenced to five years in federal prison. He has since served his time and is now a free man, refusing all interview requests. His trial in 2001 was the last time we heard him speak publicly. It has been reported that he still lives in the Chino Hills area which borders the county of LA and was last seen in 2015 working as a limousine driver for the former film producer and now convicted sex offender Harvey Weinstein. So that was the quick little story of Rafael Perez, the man that I've dubbed the real officer Tenpenny. It is worth noting that a lot of the former officers that worked alongside Perez have denied the allegations of widespread corruption amongst the police force and claimed he was only targeting cops that he didn't like in an attempt to deflect all attention. He never once spoke bad about his old friend David Mack who helped him get work with Death Row Records and was actually arrested for a bank robbery in 97. Both men, alongside Perez's old partner Nino Durden, have also been accused of being involved in the murder of rapper Christopher Wallace, better known as the Notorious B.I.G. With Biggie's remaining family filing a wrongful death lawsuit against the three, claiming they were involved in his murder and that Perez supposedly admitted to the LAPD that he was involved, however, there is no evidence of this allegation. 
So that was the video. It took me a long time to actually properly research all this and get the video together. So if you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit the like button. I'm going to be making more videos like this in the future. I'm also going to be doing some iceberg stuff coming up soon. So uh, yeah, if you want to see some of that, be sure to subscribe. And thanks for making it to the end. Peace.